Hi everyone, Luca from lucasgisbertphotography.com and in this video I'm going to give you my review of the Fuji X-T1 and give you some comparison with uh, the Nikon D3S which you could compare it as DSLR versus mirrorless. Now, uh, I got the Fuji X-T1 a few weeks back and I did a few photo shoots with it where it was used alongside my Nikon and I've also done uh, quite a big wedding with it. And um, my opinion has changed a lot from the first day I got this camera to today and it probably will change even more in a few, few months time because I would use it a bit more. Now, I got the, the X-T1 with the 56mm f1.2 and the 10 to 24 uh, f4 uh, OIS, which means that it is stabilized. Uh, and the reason I got these two lenses, well, the first one, the 10 to 24, I needed to cover this angle with uh, my Nikon system, which I don't have anymore. I sold my Nikon D800, a Tokina 16 to 28, and the 50 millimeter f1.4 uh, to actually get a, a, a small kit on the Fuji side, so I got the 1024, so now I'm covering this angle. But the 56 mm is more of, uh, of something I really wanted than more something I needed, because I have an 85 mm, I have 105 mm, and I have a 70 to 200 mm on the Nikon side, which is quite a lot of portrait lenses, which can be used for portraits, all the things, but mainly for portraits. Now the 56 mm is a lens which has been looked pretty much as the portrait lens that Fuji does. And the, the quality of this lens is incredible. It really is. Uh, the 10 to 24 is the same. The, the lenses that they are making are completely made of metal. Very, very smooth, super beautifully made. Uh, both lenses and the camera are made in Japan, uh, which is always kind of a sign of quality. Uh, the, the optics are just brilliant. I have no issue with flare, uh, which I had quite a lot of problems with the Tokina, but this one's handle flare like I've never seen something before. Uh, great dynamic range with the X-T1. I mean, the kit is just incredible. And, you know, the thing is that when you compare this camera to this one, there's two different systems and it's quite hard to compare, uh, despite being both professional camera giving professional results. Uh, it, it is two different systems and I think they need to be looked at differently. For some people this will be perfect, for some people this will be better. And that's why it's a bit hard to compare, so I can just give you my personal opinion on both of them. But let's have a quick look at the um, close-up at the Fuji. Now, obviously, it's a very good looking camera with nice little dial. They're all made of metal, uh, very easy to move. The ISO, you need to press the, the button to move the ISO dial, but it's something you get used to it. And I know that when I, I first got a camera, I had a lot of problem. Now I don't even look at it. And the good thing, one of the great things about this camera is you can do everything through the viewfinder, uh, which I will come back uh, later on. What I'd like to um, just give you a comparison of is prices. Now, you may think that it would be cheaper to go for a kit like this if you're looking to upgrade your camera or, brown, or, or buy a new system uh, instead of buying uh, a DSLR, like a D800 maybe, or a D3S. So if, you, if you're looking for D4, D4S, that's gonna be a bit more expensive, but I would say in the mid-range around the D800, uh, D3S, uh, you pretty much will be paying the same thing. Um, for this kit with the grip and a couple of batteries, uh, the, the cost in euros was three and a half thousand euros. That is a lot of money for a kit. And when I sold my Nikon D800 with the 50mm f1.4 and the Tokina 16 to 28, 
I was about at two and a half thousand, so I actually had to put about thousand euro from my own pocket to get this kit, you know. Uh, I wasn't really expecting this when I started to look into it. So that, it, on the price, um, it, you won't, you won't buy this to uh, to save money, uh, or you won't buy this to, yeah, the one way or another, you know, the prices is quite high. So um, that's one thing. Ergonomics, well, when I own my Nikon, it's really, it feels like it's not going anywhere. I, ne I never use straps anymore since I used the Spider Holster. Now I've got the Spider Holster for, uh, on the grip here, but Ergonomics, when, when I hold it the first time, I, I really kind of felt like I was holding it with my fingertip. And obviously it's a small camera, so if I wanted a big camera, I'll just take this one. But it, it gets you, you need to get used to it, you know, you really need to put your hand a bit more inside and you need to be a bit more careful because you could more easily, I would say, uh, if you bang something or if you, someone running to you, it could drop, you know, you have to be a bit more careful. Uh, having the grip really gives you a much, much better grip, uh, which allows you to give, to put four or five fingers. Having the spider roster gives you even a better grip when you were shooting portrait because the, the, the plate which you put under the camera really kind of takes your full hand. So if you are thinking about getting this or if you already have an XT1 with a grip, I, I do recommend you look at the spider roster. Uh, great system. Uh, I've not used a, a strap since I used this because it's just so much better and it gives you that extra grip if you use it in portrait mode. Um, it's a little thing, but you know, uh, little things add up and it kind of makes a bit of difference. Um, when it comes to uh, the feeling of it, it's, I just enjoy so much shooting with this, so much more than the D3S when I take it, it is really to get the job done. Um, it's quick, it's easy, it's simple. It works great, it's fast, the focus is very impressive. Everything works, ex it's, it's just great. When I start using this one, things are a bit different. It's like using camera as a bit of character, you know, and it takes a bit more time, you have to be more patient, you know. It, things are a little uh, slower, we can say. Now, when I say slow, I'm not talking about the, the camera itself. When I talk to focus or programming or starting the camera, Everything is really, really super quick on this. The, the focus, I was so impressed, you know, I was used to, uh, on the small camera, I was the focus taking forever to charge, uh, to, to, um, to work, as this one just works perfectly quick. One thing that I really, really liked as well about the, the Fuji is the screen, which you're able to tilt. Now, I've never actually had a camera with a tilting screen, and I found it very handy, uh, especially at weddings where I was, kind of fiddling with the, um, the dials and uh, looking at the screen to take some shots which you don't normally get because you're a bit lower. So you've got a perspective which is a bit different than if you had it at your eye or you love to be on your knees. And it, it's much more discreet as well. And sometimes that's what you need to really catch some, uh, some kind of emotions or some people having a laugh, you know, because a lot of people when they see you with a camera, they kind of look at you smiling thinking, that's what you're looking for. Uh, but the most of the time, you're not looking for that. You, you, exactly, you're looking for to catch this moment when they're joking, when they're laughing uh, between them. And I find having that screen really, really handy to do this. Also, when I was doing some family shots, if you uh, kind of lie down uh, some people, you don't, I used to have to lie down with this on the same set. Now I can just put myself on the knees and look at the screen and that is really handy. Now I had a few issues with the screen uh, while I was at the wedding where the screen will just automatically go back to the EVF and for no reason and I had to tilt the camera up and down to bring it back which was a bit, a bit strange but um, I don't know well, yeah that, that's what I was doing and I didn't really understand why now I don't know if I was doing something wrong or if the camera had a bit of an issue uh, but the, uh, the viewfinder on this camera, for someone who works in manual like me constantly, it's just such a time saver. Uh, on my Nikon, if I decide to take a picture, the first thing I want to do is kind of get the right exposure. 
and when I use the light meter, try to get it at zero, take a picture, and then from there, I decide if I need to uh, move up or down uh, to get the right exposure. As on this camera, everything is in the viewfinder. As you move your aperture, your speed, your ISO, everything will change uh, before you take the picture. So, it's quite hard to explain, but when you, it's like having, uh, it's like when you work in a live view mode and you change the aperture in certain camera, you can see the changes in the exposure. Well, this does it uh, as you're looking through the viewfinder. So you could pretty much be looking at uh, the couple or the person you're shooting and making all your changes, taking the picture, and because you get the, um, I get a preview of half a second that comes through the viewfinder, you don't really need to get your eye off the screen and look at the viewfinder or press the play button to look at the image, the, the review of the, the image to see if your exposure is right. You can do everything from looking at the viewfinder. This makes you really, really save time, uh, which is quite surprising, you know. Um, so yeah, for, uh, for a digital viewfinder, it's just incredible. Uh, the thing can see in the dark as well. When it's really dark and you start focusing, you kind of see everything is starting to light up. Uh, that is just brilliant, really, really is brilliant. The other thing is, uh, when it comes to ergonomic, another thing is you get the, the four little buttons you had back. And I use them, I've set them up, all of them, for the focus point. So every time I press them, they will uh, move the little focus point for me to focus on where I want to focus. But the problem is I have to press one time to activate it and then press it a few times to uh, settle up where I want to settle up. Gets a bit time to get used to it. It's not the quickest thing to use. Uh, I know some people have added some, um, some stuff on top of these buttons to get a better feel. And it's true because it, it, feel, it doesn't really feel you really have to, uh, you know, to look for those buttons. Once you get used to it, you, you know where they are, but it can be a bit slow. Um, to use, but that's not so bad. Uh, other thing about the ergonomics, you've got pretty much everything, all the dials here, like Nikon, you've got the um, the uh, speed here, the, uh, the drive, the high burst drive, which is really, really quick. Uh, you've got the continuous, single and manual focus on there, like the old Nikon, which is far better in my opinion than the um, then the new one where you have to press a button and you have to change your dial. Uh, everything is pretty much on the body. The meter, the light meter uh, here is there as well. I don't really use it because I work in manual. Um, the exposure compensation is very handy if you work on aperture priority. The record button is a bit at the back here. It's not easy to dial it. But I, I got some very bad habits at the beginning where I was a bit confused and I used this hand to move the speed, but as now I kind of just know where it is and it's, it's great. Um, the dial goes from 4000 to 1 second and then you can use the bulb, bulb option or automatic. And for example, if I set it up to 500, you can then move the little dial at the front here, which will go from uh, 300 to maybe 800. So you will have that difference which you will move from here. And that is really handy because you get an about exposure with your, your speed dial and after it's really quick to go up and down with this. Um, apart from this, uh, it's, it's just a, an incredible camera, it really is. Um, I've done some testing on the, in the first few days comparing my Nikon with an 85mm and this and the result, I couldn't really see much difference. I actually found it that the, the Fuji has a better quality. It has a better resolution, it has 16 megapixels, as this is only 12. But I don't really look at this. I think I look more at the tone of the skin, at the, the, the color in the picture, the, uh, the clarity and the, the contrast. And this camera, in my opinion, handles portraits better than the Nikon. Um, I know it's a big thing to say, but uh, I think, like I say, it's two different cameras. Um, high ISO, this one, I've used it up to 6,400 uh, in a church, 
it was okay, it was uh, usable, uh, really little work to make it nice and clean, but you cannot use it on H1 or H2 because it's just completely uh, destroy and the problem is that if you shoot in raw, uh, if you put it into H1 and H2, it will not take a raw file, it will only take a JPEG and that is good to know. And one more thing is there is the application Fuji which you can uh, control the camera in a remote. If you take a picture with this, it's not going to take a raw, it's going to take a JPEG. That's a good thing to know as well. Uh, but when it comes to ISO, uh, the card of the D3S is just well, way better. I can shoot at ISO 10,000. Even if I could, um, if it had 10,000, I couldn't use it. I cannot go over 6,400. In some situations, rarely, I must say it's rare that I go over 6,400, but it happens. Um, I would have problems with this one. Uh, and uh, especially if I use my 10 to 24, which only goes to f4. And the, the real problem is not um, the, the speed when you're taking a picture of something which is kind of static. But if you start taking portraits, if there are people in the, in the frame, you have to put your speed up just to keep up with the, their movement. Uh, in some situations, I will have problems with this one. Um, obviously, my lens selection is, on, is still small and one of the things is that with Nikon, we really have a huge lens selection. Uh, Tamron, Sigma, uh, obviously Nikon, uh, making lenses for these bodies. And as Fuji at the moment, is really only Fuji. Uh, Samyang does a few, uh, but it's quite limited. But their map on the, uh, of what is coming up is quite exciting. We're gonna have an equivalent of a 2470 f2.8 a 70-200 f2.8, a 90mm f2, uh, great portrait lens, I guess. Uh, and I think you know they are going to come up with more and more lenses, and possible an upgrade on the X-T1 or the X-Pro1. So I think Fuji uh, is going to blow, uh, <laughs> is going to blow up, is going to, is going to go crazy. I mean, everyone is talking about it. And there are a lot of reasons why everyone's talking about it. This camera is just insanely good. Uh, and it's quite scary because um, you, you've got a fact of the camera looking smaller than my Nikon D3200 where I'm filming on. And you turn up at a wedding with this camera in hand and you, you get the, the old look of the people with the DSLR thinking, it's just just an amateur camera. This is not a professional camera, and despite the price being insanely expensive, but worth it, worth every penny in my opinion. But uh, you know things are changing, and I know that when I'm using this camera, I feel so much better than using the D3H, which which I love. I, I would have lots of problems selling this camera because I like it so much. But I'm really, really enjoying shooting with this camera. It's just, um, I don't know, I, I, I just really like it. It's, it's great for everything I do, which is portrait, photographs, uh, family, uh, weddings. Uh, it's just, just really, really good. And uh, I'm really looking forward to get more lenses and kind of grow my kit. But um, if I had to choose today between uh, D3S with the lens selection and the same lens selection with the X-T1. I would very possibly go for, towards the Fuji. Uh, and for me, I've been with Nikon for ever since the film, uh, for about 15 years. I've always worked with Nikon. I have, you know, I think Fuji is just great. Really, really good. A couple of things that Fuji should be thinking to do, especially if they, uh, if they start to approach the professional market is make a double card slot. There is only one. And I'm a bit paranoid when it comes to weddings uh, because you just can't do it again. If you have any problem with your card, that could really, really um, be a problem. Having double card slot kind of will help you. Uh, the app, uh, which I talked about before, there is a few bugs with it, uh, but the idea behind every feature of the app is great and the live view is pretty much, uh, there is no delay between uh, the connection, between the, the viewing of the, the phone or the iPad and the 
uh, the viewing of the camera, so you have a constantly live view it, which is great. Uh, apart from this, yeah, I think I've pretty much done a roundup of this camera. Uh, to me, as I say, you know, if I had to choose between the Fuji and the Nikon to take with me, and if I had to leave one behind, I would leave the Nikon behind. Um, but right now, because uh, I don't have really much, uh, I don't have anything to use off-camera flash with the Fuji, because I don't have the lens selection which I have with the Nikon, I'm using both system and it works very, very well for me. And I think I will be using the both system for quite some time until everything kind of start to get into place on the Fuji side. I really, really want to use this camera with off-camera flash and see how it works. Uh, because if I can get this sorted on that side, I think the, Fuji, the, the Nikon is gonna stay home a bit more. Uh, but I will need a few more lenses and then uh, we'll see. So yeah, that is pretty much my review of the Fuji X-T1. Um, I didn't go through every single feature because I don't think there is a need. I really wanted to give you a review which focuses on the use of the camera on the field and not uh, the geeky stuff you need to know which you can find on the internet or anywhere. Uh, it's 16 megapixel, uh, but that is not really something I'm too worried or bothered about. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. So if you have any questions, please post them down below. I will be posting uh, much more uh, photos of what I'm taking with them, try to do more comparison with the Nikon to show you that uh, you, you know, you, what you do with this, you can do with this. So, you know, it's... Uh, so yeah, join uh, the uh, Facebook group which I have, which is called Lucas Group. I'll put the link down below so you can join and see all the, the tests uh, which I will do. And if you want to put any comments, I'd rather you to post it on the Facebook page, which will be more easy, much easier for me to, uh, to manage. Uh, YouTube uh, comments are a nightmare to answer, it's just very badly made, but uh, that's another issue. So yeah, any question let me know. Cheers, see ya.